Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Don't worry, this is the buy, avoid or wait for a sale list, but it's a special one because we've been sponsored. So they were like, show your ugly mug on screen. And I was like, oh, okay. So about two minutes into the video, Skillshare are having a little section where I'm gonna tell you about some of the different things that I've used from their website. Surprisingly good actually. Let's get on with the video. first game is called Whipsy and the Lost Atlas and I'm sure you can all guess which game this took inspiration from. It's essentially Kirby and it does it actually really well. You have a little whip shot that you can hook onto things and you can also whip your enemies into submission. I really enjoyed this one actually, it has a double jump that you'd expect. There's nothing overly unique about it but the overall story, colour palette and controls are decent. It is brutally difficult though so don't expect an easy ride and the overworld map is pleasant enough. An enjoyable little adventure that only retails I think for around about £5 or $6. At that price for me this would be a buy. The next game then is called Woodle Tree Adventures 2. Now the developer originally released the first game on the Nintendo Switch to quite a positive response. It was a touch muted though just because the potential was there for something amazing but the actual gameplay was quite stunted and very linear indeed. Now he took that on board, went away and created number two which improves upon every area. I love that there's a central town, that it's more open world and really it feels like an early Nintendo 64 game but in the best possible way. Everything about the experience is charming. It actually has many of the similar controls to that previous title. You can slow your fall with a slightly helicopter style leaf move. There's a double jump but it runs so beautifully at 60 frames per second and I enjoy this visual style. It's simplicity to the max but everything just works. If you know what you're getting yourself into then it would be a buy but if that price is just a touch too high then wait for the first available sale. Now, for those that don't know, Skillshare is an online learning platform. So basically, if you're trying to learn something, anything, you go onto Skillshare, type it in at the top, and it's gonna give you a series of courses made by quite ordinary people. Now, they're broken down into sections that are quite clear. What I did is I went on there and thought, okay, I've gotta make this something that I'm actually gonna need. So I went on and typed in YouTube, and there were just tons of courses about how to make good thumbnails, how to film yourself on camera, Oh, I might not have finished that course yet. Here's the course that I've been enjoying. If you create your own or you're interested in making your own channel, it's really useful. It might be worth checking out when you go on there. Also remember that after the two months free premium trial, the standard price is around about $10. So it really is quite inexpensive. In the description below this video, I'm gonna put a little link so that if you're interested in that, and it'll be a huge support for us guys, you get a free trial, I think it's about two months, then I would recommend going on there and just having a little look use the free trial and you really get out of it what you put into it. I think I spent about two or three hours on there. I learned how to do better thumbnails and I learned quite a little bit about creating new fonts for my videos. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you want to go and check out that content, all the links will be down in the description. The third game on our list is called Rogue Singularity. Now we looked at this one in our upcoming list, I think it was either last week or the week before, and it had an interesting idea of procedurally generated platforming in a 3D world. And while Glenn wasn't overly impressed by that, I thought it might be quite good. It's okay at best, I would say. The procedural generation becomes quite obvious as the care and attention needed to create platforming that's actually fun isn't there. Now that being said, every now and then you get a level that's created that just works brilliantly, but at other times it was a bit of a slog. You can upgrade and equip these to your character, gaining you a slight advantage, and you do this by 
collecting the coins littered throughout the worlds. The visuals aren't on point if you ask me, it's running at around about 30 frames per second, but I really have to agree with Glenn here, the lack of the human touch in the levels makes them just feel less enjoyable. And overall, I found the game to be a touch forgettable. It's not terrible, look, I'm not going to say avoid it, but know exactly what you're getting yourself in for and potentially wait for quite a deep sale. The next game needs no real introduction, I'm still going to do it though, and it's Super Hot, which was originally a VR experience. Now on VR, it was an amazing game where you could dodge, duck, dive, dip, duck and dodge all the bullets, but every time you moved, they would then move themselves, and it was very satisfying to do that. Now, on the Nintendo Switch, you have gyro aiming, so they've tried to keep some elements from the VR experience, but for me, it doesn't work nearly as well. Each area acts as a puzzle of sorts, and these become more tricky as the introduction of being able to melee your enemies into submission, grab the guns out of the air, and then try and take them down, begin to ramp up. As I said, the whole whole experience just isn't as good on the Nintendo Switch, I would wait for a sale. Next up is Rad, and I've been playing a great deal of this as I intend to review it, whether or not I'm going to get around to it, who knows, and it's from the genius of Tim Schafer. It's essentially a 3D roguelike adventure game where you're put into a post-nuclear apocalyptic world, given a baseball bat and told to clear floors. The most similar experience I could describe is probably somewhere between Toe Jam and Earl and The Binding of Isaac. At the top of the screen you have a radiation meter, which is essentially your level gauge. When it fills up by killing enemies or hitting radioactive plants, you then mutate. And it's this random mutation element that kept the game so much fun for me. One stage, you might grow a crab-like body, while the next, a flamethrower comes from your arm and it becomes a twin-stick shooter. Now, while I don't want to spoil my review, I did very much enjoy this game. It's £15.99 or $19.99, and I would say that's an absolute buy for the amount of value you're getting. It's one where you need to put in a lot of time to get the most out of it, but it's also very enjoyable once you understand it. For my money, a definite buy. You must be Okay, which takes us on to The Milkmaid of the Milky Way. This was created by a single developer and looks to be a classic style point and click adventure set in a Nordic wasteland where you run, well, a farm for dairy cows. There's a space element to the game, but I don't want to ruin it. The music is absolutely sublime and the audio that goes with every action you do is also excellent. I was so impressed with this little title. Another game retailing at around about £5 or $6 is an absolute steal. Pick this one up. The Hotline Miami collection recently dropped onto the Switch Stealth Drop style. After Glenn's review of the latest title, I was really keen to get back and try the original, so it was a nice touch and I'm glad I did. These are brilliant games, absolutely great. It runs flawlessly on the Switch, everything is super buttery smooth, and really, if you're like myself and you didn't play them back on PC, pick them up now, they are great. While they simply look like a top-down GTA of old clone, they really aren't. There's a stealth element here, every melee weapon is silent, while your others are much louder, and you can go about each stage quite tactically, and you have to be very precise with everything you do. If you die, you can instantly reset with the press of a button. The only problem for many is going to be that slightly higher asking price. At around about £22, this may be for some a wait for the sale, but I would tell you it is worth that price for both the first and second titles. They are amazing.
Okay, the next title is another that isn't even out yet, I don't think, but I've been playing a great deal for a review, and it's called Decay of Logos. Now, this looked really interesting. It's a Souls-like, self-proclaimed, where you control an elf-like creature who has an elk companion. Combat's very familiar with a lock-on, and you'll spend a great deal of time strafing around these tree-like enemies to strike them from behind and avoid those killing blows that they deliver. There's an interesting sleeping mechanic here as well that is slightly like the bonfires, but you can be attacked while you're camping in the night sometimes. A little bit like the old Baldur's Gate games where you'd camp in the wilderness and sometimes you'd be waylaid by enemies. The real issue with this game at the moment is the performance and as the developers have rightly stated this is an older build that I've been playing so hopefully on day one we see a much improved build. I'll be letting you know either way. As it is in this condition mm, I couldn't recommend it. While the core experience is a good game it currently just isn't performing up to scratch so I'm not going to say avoid because I enjoy the game but that performance is something to be checked before you pick this one up. Lift thine eyes and look to the heavens. We are both being judged, girl. There was a game about 10 years ago called No One Lives Forever. It was like a first person spy shooter where you control a female protagonist. And that really reminds me of the next title. It's called Agent A, A Puzzle in Disguise. And I was fully expecting to mm, pretty much just write this one off as a cheap mobile port. But I liked it. I really enjoyed it actually. It has brilliant touch screen integration. So if you're someone that plays these types of games touch screen, you're going to like that a lot. The Joy-Cons work well enough. Again, I don't know why these types of experiences don't include motion controls, because using that right Joy-Con as a mouse would essentially negate any of the other problems you might have. But what I like about this is how it integrates the overarching story of hunting down this double agent with the puzzling. The puzzles are simple, but quite enjoyable, and they make you feel much smarter than you actually are. I know myself. You'll be sliding secret levers, pushing buttons, and collecting various items to use in different areas of the world. But if this type of game is something you enjoy, then I'd say maybe pick this one up in a sale. It's currently around about 12 pounds or 13 or 14 dollars. It's a good little game this. Enjoyed it. The final game is Raiden 5 The Director's Cut. As someone who hasn't played a huge number of shmups over the years other than perhaps the old classics, R-Type and so on, I was so impressed by this game. It is an absolute delight. There are several elements which make it so enjoyable. The first of them is the story. It's done well and it feels like you're actually piloting a vehicle as a character. Of the three starting ships, you then choose the individual sections to load out your ship so that perhaps you like a gun that fires in a straight line that's continuous or maybe you prefer slightly slower homing missiles. It is very customizable in that respect. The third element that is great are the difficulty levels. Now, if you're not someone that's used to these types of games, you can tweak this difficulty to the nth degree. But I found the default normal difficulty to be tough, but very well balanced. You have the usual screen clearing special powers and collecting the colored gem that matches the setup that you've currently got on your ship will level it up and it gets more and more powerful. Overall, it feels very tight. My kids have been playing a bit of this in co-op as well and have enjoyed it just as much as I did. There are some great boss fights as well as some levels where you'll find yourself straight Strafe running ground units almost feels a little bit like a TIE fighter in Star Wars going down those trenches. I really enjoyed this. This is a brilliant game. Not really sure how it's been received on other systems, but I absolutely loved it. I would say at the price it currently is, at around £26 or $30, it's going to be a touch too high for most people. But if you're in the market for possibly one of, if not the best, shmup currently on Switch, then this is going to be a good choice for you. For everyone else though, it is worth buying. Maybe wait for a sale. Well there we have it. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Do check out the links down below. That'll be a massive support for us because they'll go, hey, this video got some engagement. So 64 games I think I've managed to source now. And a huge big thank you to Cubic Games. Those guys are legendary and they've really sorted us out on this one. I think that's it. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya! Stop.